So now let us learn about circuits and circuit diagrams. What are the circuits? Circuit consists of your appliances like your lights, fans, etc. plus conductors, electrical source and some resistances. Now tell me what is circuit diagram? The circuit diagram is a proper connections between the different components, a power source, some appliances like bulb, fans, whatever it is, some resistances. If you show the proper connections by symbolic representation, then that is called as a circuit diagram. You should properly show from where the current flows, what is the power source, what are the appliances, where the resistance is. If you want to measure the electric current, then where to put the ammeter. Ammeter is a meter which is used to measure the electric current. Or where to put the voltmeter. Voltmeter is a meter which is used to measure voltage or potential difference. Now when you show everything by a particular diagrams having particular symbols for the components is called as the circuit diagram. I am telling you again and again for the definitions you have to refer your book word by word. Here I am explaining you what the things are but when it when it comes to writing you have to refer your book word to word comma to comma full stop to full stop. Not a single point from the definitions of the book should change. Okay. Now let us see one circuit diagram. Now to draw these circuit diagrams, first of all we should know the different symbols used in the circuit diagram. Okay. For the conductors, that is the conducting wires, we know that. We use the straight lines or different lines. But this is one wire. Okay. But suppose this wire is going from here to here. Okay. But it is not touching. You might have seen the electric wires in your home. Okay. It is totally insulated. What happens when you touch the wire at the end without insulation? What happens if the button is on, wire is uh, put inside the plugs and you touch the wire? What will happen? You will get the shock. Right? If two non-insulated wires are touched to each other, what will happen? The electrical current will flow through. Right? But suppose the insulated wires are there. If these two wires are insulated and if I put one over the other, what will happen? Current will not flow through them. This is the jump. Okay? They are not touching actually. But here, they are touching. So if the wires are actually touching to their non-insulated part, proper wire, then this kind of symbol is used. But suppose my wire is not touching here, then I show a jump here. This is intersected wires and this is jumpers. This is drawn when the wires are jumped, they are not touched to each other. Okay, this is one of the symbol we use in the circuit diagram. Let us see a few more symbols. Conductors means wires are shown like straight line, maybe cross section or maybe jump ones. Then we have in circuit diagrams, we have power source. Generally, it's a battery whenever you are using in the labs or small bulbs, LEDs, whatever it is. Batteries or whenever you are talking in terms of science, we will better call this as electric cell. Okay. Electric cells are shown by this symbol. The longer segment is a positive terminal 
and a shorter segment is a negative terminal. If you are using the series of batteries, series of batteries means you know that in your torch, in a longer torch, only one, one cell is not enough. What we do? We put two or three cells, one over the other, in a same line, that is we call as the series of batteries. If you are using the series of batteries, then this symbol will be something like this. This is for the series of batteries and generally the value, what is the value? Suppose this is a 12 volt, suppose it is 1.5 volt, you know there are different uh, electric cells are available. Generally your single pencil cell carries 1.5 volts or your bigger cells carries 12 volts or 9 volts etc. Now we will see the keys or keys are called in the circuit diagrams generally you call them as a buttons okay. The keys for on off okay closing and breaking the circuit closing means now again this is a different terminology closing means activating the circuit and breaking means breaking the circuit deactivating the circuits okay now this is shown as the keys are shown as like this and when the circuit is closed this key is shown like this or here it is like this this represents the circuit is closed and this is circuit is bricked then wire joint we have already seen then if you want to show the bulb You simply this is the simple symbol of bulb. Now we have to show some meters. We use some meters in an electric circuit. Ammeter. Ammeter is used for measuring electric current. Ammeter is simply any meter is simply shown here like this. Ammeter. Any meter is generally shown like this. Okay, if it's an ammeter, you write A. If it's a voltmeter, you write V. So, voltmeter, we show V. Now, there are resistances. Now, what is the resistance? The resistance in is any kind of obstacle in the motion. Like you know that if there is no resistance, what will happen? I hope you remember the Newton's law. First law, what it says? Everybody continues in its state of rest or uniform motion unless and until it is compelled by some other external unbalanced force. Right? What will happen? Suppose you are moving on the cycle or you are riding a bicycle at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour and suppose wind is coming from that side in front of you 5 kilometers what will happen your speed will reduce right so in the circuit diagrams also in in the path of electric current also every body every metal conductors are having some obstacles in between which is called as the resistance when the resistance is minimum, that metal is called as a good conductor of electricity. And when the resistance is maximum, that is called as bad conductor of electricity. For example, wood. Wood is bad conductor of electricity. We got then the plastic, bad conductor of electricity. And that is why on the copper wire, the insulation material is of plastic or rubber sometimes wood and what are the good conductors copper silver gold 
these are the good conductor of electricity but still resistance is there there is one theoretical condition it is obtained in very high end labs the conductors or a metal is called as the superconductor where the resistance is zero when the resistance is zero that metal is called as a superconductor it is achieved in the laboratories only because to achieve superconductivity you need the temperature at absolute zero that means the temperature of that conductor must be minus 273 degree centigrade which of course is not possible in our surroundings so superconductivity at a room temperature is still not possible but whenever you want a very high level of conductivity very minimum resistance you want like in a satellites in the computer parts in the computer motherboards on the circuits where the resistance should be minimum there generally the gold is used silver is used but in our household wirings we use copper obviously we have to use copper because though we get the better conductivity in gold and silver we cannot afford it so this resistance is symbolized like this let us consider a simple circuit diagram where there is only one bulb there is one key always remember this is the convention of showing electric current from positive to negative okay now consider this is 1 meter wire 1 meter wire is there this circuit is closed so bulb glows right now suppose if i feel that this bulb is very bright and i don't want that much brightness what we generally do what do you do in your home when you want to reduce the speed of fan or dim the light you just rotate the dimmers right but means what you do there are two three ways the first of all suppose this battery is 3 volts what i will do i will reduce this battery instead of 3 volts i will put 1.5 volts so that the bulb is dim but suppose that is not allowed this battery must be 3 volts then what should i do reduce the power of bulb reduce the low level bulb okay but now even the bulb should be same now what to do simple i told you that there is a resistance in the conductors so as and when you are riding a bicycle and as and when the wind velocity is increasing your velocity goes on decreasing as per resistance so now in this circuit i have a particular resistance in this copper wires what i'll do i'll increase the length of wire instead of 1 meter wire what i'll do if i increase this circuit what will happen now the length of wire is increased and so the resistance is increased and so my light become dull because some amount of voltage or some amount of the current is consumed or is eaten by the resistance of the conductor right now for its natural resistance i'll show it somewhere here fine but suppose how the dimmer will work i want to dim the light and brighten the light what i will do in this circuit i will install or i will join such a resistor whose value can be changed this resistor is there now my current starts flows from here 
we will say that at this point this resistance is not at all there that means if my pointer is here the resistance is minimum and if my pointer is here the resistance is maximum what will happen let us consider it is here the current is flowing from here up to this point and to the bulb what what is happening resistance is minimum at this point so the bulb will be bright but now i take this pointer from here to here maximum what will happen now resist now your current is flowing through circuit at this point and now current is flowing through the resistors through the resistance and to the bulb so the bulb some amount of current is eaten by this resistance and so the less power is getting to your bulb and so the bulb will be dim this is called as a variable resistor it is called as rheostat or you can simply write variable resistor okay now in this circuit there is some amount of the internal resistance and this is called as the external resistance external resistor okay so this is a kind of circuit diagram this is a complete circuit diagram so mind well whenever you are showing some circuit diagrams in your exams or on your paper few things are to be remembered number 1 you have to show this positive and negative signs though we know that the bigger line is positive and smaller line is negative you have to show positive and negative symbols second thing you have to write the value here 3 volts 1.5 volt 12 volts whatever it is then you have to show the arrows it must be from positive to negative okay must okay keep in mind if you are showing closed circuit or open circuit if it's a closed circuit remember to properly give the key symbol here this is a closed circuit if you don't show this and if you show that bulb is glowing your circuit diagram is wrong because the circuit is not complete the current cannot pass cannot current cannot jump from this end to another end so whenever you are showing that this bulb is glowing this circuit must be closed remember because you may lose half or one mark if particular circuit diagram is to be shown at that point okay now suppose better to show a circle here it looks better that's all now suppose if you want to measure the current always remember the ammeter is connected in the circuit in series in series means hand to hand okay from this hand to that hand that means my ammeter will come here and whenever the potential difference is measured okay it is always shown in parallel that means over somewhere in your resistance in your circuit you should show the voltmeter just remember this ammeter is always connected in the circuit in series and voltmeter is connected in the circuit parallelly okay so now let's move ahead to next topic of this why this voltmeter is connected to parallel what is the voltmeter what is the voltage i told you that unless and until you create a potential difference the current will not flow so let us see what is the potential difference is okay let us move to next topic 